you for staying with Daybreak. So we're talking about waste disposal, especially masks or COVID-19 waste disposal. Now, more than 40 million Kenyans are supposed to wear masks every day. Most of those masks are not reusable. They're single-use masks. How do you dispose of masks that are potentially also infected? Joining me now is Dr. Chris Kipto. He's the PS Ministry of Environment and Forestry. He's joining us live right here from Nairobi. Dr. thank you for making time for us. So masks are not biodegradable and some may even be infected. What is the plan when it comes to mask disposal? Uh, Trevor, good morning and uh, thank you for inviting me. First, let me say that uh, we appreciate, uh, as a ministry, we appreciate the effort that has been made by the COVID-19 emergency crisis to ensure that Kenyans are, 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 are educated and are also uh, informed about the dangers of COVID-19. And w there is also the new regulations which are now requiring every Kenyan to put on a mask. So basically the demand for masks has increased uh, in a very big way. As you put it, about 40 million masks have to be used every day. And, and most of them are single use. And that means by the end of the day, we have to dispose them. Uh, we, the, the, our technical experts call those masks uh, as biohazards because they are potentially infectious, especially if they have been worn by someone who has been infected with coronavirus. So for that reason, our ministry has uh, worked with the Ministry of uh, Health to, to come up with guidelines to make sure that uh, they are uh, complied with by, by all those that are in, involved. So in all the 47 counties, we have our NEMA officers together with the public health officers who are supposed to make sure that the, 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 the guidelines have been complied. So, the, uh, PS, according to the national guidelines for the management of COVID-19 waste, which is published by NEMA, the one you're saying, they say that there will yeah. be special bins set up in centralized areas in communities to dispose of the COVID-19 waste. This is supposed to be done by management of gated communities, institutions, office blocks. What happens if they don't do that? Because it's expensive. Yeah, it is expensive. We are aware of this, uh, uh, but we, are, we, we, we have actually asked that the county governments have to work hard to make sure that they provide for this because it is a requirement, especially in where we have isolation centers and in hospitals, there, there is a requirement that they must uh, have that uh, waste put in, in the prescribed manner. In, 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 at household level, we are actually telling, uh, educating Kenyans to, to use other means, even when you don't have the, the disposal uh, beans. Uh, at least at your household level, when you get back home, just make sure that the, the mask that you have removed, you are able to wrap it well. And even if you have a, a protective equipment, anything that can be seal proof, and then you are, you are now be able to dispose it. We know it's a challenge because these bins are not all over. And this is why we are saying that we expect responsibility at every household so that uh, everyone knows there are dangers around use of uh, masks, especially disposal. And therefore, they have to take measures to ensure that uh, they co collect it, then uh, uh, wrap it well, and then safely dispose it. And then uh, it will be taken up... Uh, by by the uh, garbage collectors who also have under uh, uh, guidelines to ensure that they are uh, properly disposed. But P.S. Yes, therein lies the therein lies the problem because we don't in municipal waste we don't have garbage separation. It does not exist in Kenya right now. Separating garbage so that you know this is a biohazard, this is uh, domestic, and this is also uh, toxic waste. How do we go about that, especially in households? We, I just wanted to say, as a ministry, we are, we are working on a policy now to ensure that uh, that issue of uh, segregation of uh, policy is addressed. But this is something that will, will have to be done uh, through cabinet. So it is not something that can be done now. For now, we have to apply uh, the situation that we are in. And the, the guidelines that have been given are very clear, especially when it comes to uh, co collection of waste. I think the, 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 the NEMA has given those guidelines very clearly and uh, waste which is uh, like for instance if we have uh, from uh, waste from contaminate, that is contaminated with blood and other bodily, uh, bodily fluids yeah. we have 
pathological yeah. waste like human t- uh, tissues organ- all these are those within hospitals yeah. so, so they have to be prescribed in the manner that I have been given but yeah. I think what is important for us at home is for people who are at home they are not uh, they don't have these uh, beans we are just asking them to exercise caution and in fact our worry is not just about disposal we have also seen cases where uh, they, they are being reused which is illegal and yeah. very dangerous. And in some of the, as cupolas businessmen are already beginning to sell some of the used masks in town. This yeah. is what we are saying, we need a, a lot of care. We are even uh, advo- advocating that once you use, if you have a scissor at home, please cut it so, in such a way that uh, no one can use it. Make it not possible for another person to use it. Yeah. You're saying this is a cabinet decision because uh, when, when are we likely to get direction on this, the policy directives? We have uh, prepared the cabinet memo on waste management. Yeah. We have also bill on waste management, and we have even gone ahead to pre- prepare an action and plan specific for Nairobi. Yeah. And this is based on the fact that on every day, about 22,000 tons of waste are generated in Kenya. And in Nairobi alone, about 3,000 tons of waste are generated. Yeah. If you categorize that, 60% of it is organic. Well, about 30 to 35 percent is what is called recyclable. Yeah. It's only about five percent that has to be uh, is, uh, disposed in our landfill. So what we are, the policy is, is actually ch- uh, calling for a paradigm shift where we move from what is, we call linear approach, where we just uh, use and we dump in, the, we, we take the, our waste to Dandora, uh, we don't extract value. So we are moving from that to what is called circular model where we make efforts to segregate. If it is organic waste, we make sure we derive maximum value from that uh, waste. And, and then we make sure that the other companies that can recycle are able, able to recycle. So at the end of the day, we don't have a lot of waste uh, all over because a lot of value can be derived. So yeah. already my minister has uh, acted on it and uh, it is already awaiting a cabinet uh, discussion. And we expect that this will be given priority yeah. especially given the current pandemic, so that we then begin to implement this. We, we also expect that Parliament will have to quickly pass through the the, the, I mean, the Waste Management Bill so that uh, it can then become law. Yeah. But as I've said, even before that, we are working with the, the Nairobi Metropolitan Services and the county government of Nairobi to see how to implement uh, this po- policy even when it is not yet uh, passed by Cabinet, especially with the parties that have already agreed with that. So on this waste management bill, what is the plan for public-private partnerships? Because we are dealing with different types of waste now. In fact, right now, another one that is coming up is uh, the emergence of sanitizer pet bottles. But there are, there are companies like Petco that actually do the recycling, but not everyone is obligated to work with them. What is, what is the directive to ensure that every manufacturer is obligated to ensure that the pet bottles that they release are recycled or collected? Uh, this is uh, this is part of what we have developed. In fact, we have regulations also where we expect that it's called extended producer uh, 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 responsibility. Where if you are responsible for production of um, uh, of um, um, such bottles. Uh, bottles, yes, uh, yeah, then you must be responsible. Also, you are obligated to ensure that you collect that waste. And, and that is coming through the, the new regulations. Uh, uh, the, the, the details will be shared with the public in due course. But we expect that this will be done. It is rather complex. It has not been done before in Kenya, but we expect that this is the right moment to begin to do this because we don't have another option. The population is increasing, and uh, it means, therefore, waste has to increase every day. And whether it's biodegradable or not, we must make sure we, we find ways to ensure that we segregate that waste and ensure that uh, for where we can derive value that is derived and what cannot be uh, uh, recycled then is safely disposed yeah and this is in the pipeline we are already discussing with some three companies uh, on on the issue of organic waste uh, just as a pilot i know they are discussing with the county especially with wakulima market yeah. and uh, other markets also like uh, city park market yeah. And the others that maybe may be uh, uh, economically viable for those companies, because this has to be private sector driven. It is not going to, going to be government engaged in this. All we are working uh, 
uh, hard to, to, to achieve is a policy, legal and regulated environment to ensure that uh, the private sector then can be able to uh, function well and, and take advantage of, of the situation. And, and then ensure that West is, is uh, we derive West from that. So we have engaged the Kenya Asian manufacturers, Kenya private sector land and others. And I, I think good progress is, is being made even before the policy is in, is, 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 is in place. Okay, so once this policy is in place, uh, P.S., the other concern would be it's easier to have this garbage separated at the household level. So are we going to see a situation where each and every household will have different bins for different collection days? What is the bigger plan here? Yeah, the, this is, and we say that uh, at every household level, there should be an attempt to segregate waste. What is organic, you put in a separate bin. What is not uh, what, uh, um, organic, you put in a separate bin. What is recyclable? recyclable. And then the rest will have to now be w working also with the companies involved with the waste collection. Then that has to be taken properly, I mean, to the, to the appropriate place. If it is organic waste, it has to be taken to the, to the industry, which will then uh, work on deriving value from that. If it is uh, recyclable, of course, there is the, the recycling companies will have to uh, take them. Then what is not uh, recyclable, then we now taken to a, 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 land, a landfill. And I think uh, already sites have been identified. So we are I, the, 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 both the county government and the national government are working on this to ensure that we, we, we start uh, implementing. Yeah, P.S., what has already worked in Kenya has always been either incentives or penalties. So what happens to people who don't adhere to these regulations once you give them out? Now we you see the, the the this is where now uh, the the waste the waste collectors will have to, and, and a mechanism to ensure that there is an incentive for people to collect and make sure they segregate. These are the details because it's a business model that they have to adopt to ensure that they get this done at the household level. But we still also expect that Kenyans, wherever they are, should try and, and make sure that they are sensitive to the environment, that they ensure that they don't just remove waste and take it. We expect that we, in my own house, that I can be able to, to educate the people in the house to ensure that that waste is collected. I don't think it's difficult to, to, to segregate that waste and because every day we, we have waste being removed and, and, and taken to an appropriate site which is then treated by the collectors, I mean the waste collectors. If, it is, if the waste collectors and the companies associated with it are able to provide the beans required, I would not expect that uh, that would be a problem where, um, with the, with the, at the household level. We are already discussing with the, the, most of the resident associations in Nairobi, and we are already engaging the, the bigger association, and they have agreed to work with us to ensure that their own members uh, support the, the, the measures that the, the government is, is taking to ensure that we, we have a clean and secure environment wherever we are. Okay. So you recently donated some okay. incinerators to Mbagathi Hospital, but there's a very huge demand for it even in other counties. Is there a plan to now distribute more incinerators across counties? Yeah, we did that at Mbagathi Hospital, and we are planning to, to go to Nakuru next week, Nakuru County. We also expect to go to Kisumu and Mombasa. The program we have in our ministry is only covering four counties. Uh, it's a pilot project. And it is it has happened in a timely manner because this is happening when we have coronavirus and this equipment and and, and, and uh, materials that we are providing are very useful for the management of coronavirus. However, we are encouraging counties to prioritize in their budgets the need to purchase some of these uh, equipment because we expect every county to have incinerator so that we we sufficiently manage. Or effectively manage the waste that is coming, particularly these single-use uh, masks yeah. and even gloves. Yeah. Okay. So what is the sensitization plan that is so different from others that have seemingly not worked here in Kenya? Now, we expect uh, to work with the media, such as yourselves and uh, many other stakeholders, to make sure that uh, we reach out to as many Kenyans as possible. Education and awareness on environmental management is key. I think knowledge is important. Let people know what is the dangers of, especially some of this uh, uh, poor management of waste, because it has hurt us. And, uh, and I think we will be working with uh, a number of stakeholders to roll out 
a campaign, an awareness campaign, which uh, we, we, I think already is being done, especially under the COVID-19 emergency crisis. But uh, as a ministry also, we have a plan to continue uh, engaging Kenyans on a number of fronts, not just on waste management, but also on other issues of environmental uh, 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 management. Yeah. So generally, what is the ministry's long-term plan when it comes to waste management? Are we going to see an end to the Dandora Dam site? What is the big picture here? Yes, I, uh, you, you, there is a lot of progress already being made uh, at the moment, to, or even on the issue of uh, Dandora. But our idea is to ensure that uh, we don't have Dandora anymore. We don't want all waste going all, uh, to, to Dandora. Uh, we would like waste which is segregated, then it, that which has been segregated is taken to appropriate uh, sites where they will then uh, value will be derived from them. So the, the companies who will be engaged in uh, management of, of, of this waste will then be uh, taking the waste to that direction. Like I think there's a company in that river who, will be, who is keen to make sure that they receive all organic waste. And they are in other designated areas, I know a company called Synergy that is uh, engaged in that. I also know another one called Takataka Solutions. And they are, they are, they are, we are already engaging them and they seem to be to be having uh, good solutions on this. So we would expect that we don't have any more Dandora sites. In fact, that will be a thing of the past in, uh, in, in, in not so far from now, uh, especially working with the county government and of course the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. Yeah. So if uh, you, you recently moved from trade to environment now, so what are your biggest priority areas in the environment sector? Having been there for a couple of months, what have you seen as the key points that you need to deal with? I, I think my first priority is, uh, and this is the priority of the ministry really, is uh, that uh, this issue of waste management is, is key. So we are giving uh, heavy priority to, to, to this. The second one is climate change, uh, mitigation and adaptation. You can see that for over 10 years our country has been facing either periods of drought and even now there are serious floods. And when you look at it, it's because uh, we haven't really taken a lot of measures to ensure that we embrace the fact that climate change is in place. So our infrastructure is under heavy uh, pressure from these floods because we have not planted enough trees, we have not addressed soil erosion and all that. So this is something we are working with our colleagues in other ministries to ensure that we put in place uh, climate mitigation measures and, and adaptation measures. We have also the 10 percent recover, which is a constitutional requirement. Uh, our ministry is very keen to ensure that we, we make progress on this front. And uh, uh, we are planning to ensure that in, within the next two, three years, that we have achieved a, 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 a serious uh, cover, uh, increase in, in, I mean, a big increase in, in the tree planting. We are hoping that one day we will be in a position to have every Kenyan a child, a, 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 an adult, and, and, and even an old person, to have the opportunity in a single day, we all go out there and plant trees. But we don't want to be planting trees. We want to be growing trees. Because it's different to just plant trees. A lot of the time we plant and we don't take care of them. We want to, people to plant and then still go back and be able to uh, take care of them. So that is another area that uh, we are focusing on. Then the issue of water tower protection uh, is another area of focus for us. We also have pollution control as an area that is of great focus. Already in Nairobi, we are working uh, very hard to ensure that we, we identify all illegal discharge uh, dump sites and structures, especially along uh, reserves. Our NEMA, the, the NEMA, NEMA has already identified about 142 illegal discharge points and uh, already has taken a number of measures in what is called uh, restoration orders to make sure that no one discharges effluent into the river. And I, we have seen a number of arrests also uh, which has been done by NEMA. We would like to see our rivers clean. They should not be polluted. Recently we were in uh, Lake Victoria and uh, we had an, a multi-agency approach to ensure that we address that issue of ident identifying all those who discharge
uh, effluent into the into the lake yeah. and we have seen a lot of progress on that front so pollution control is going to be another area of focus for us okay and then we also want education and awareness i i think uh, kenyans have a constitutional there's a, a right in the constitution for clean and secure environment but the, those rights and, 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 and have also to go with responsibility. And we expect, therefore, a lot of education and awareness yeah. so that Kenya so that they, they can only enjoy those rights if they are also responsible. All right. P.S. Finally, as we come to an end, when are we likely to see this uh, management of COVID-19 waste guidelines being implemented? They are already being implemented. We, we already issued and... Uh, we know that uh, NEMA is working with the public health and, and, and already have been issued. So it is a matter of ensuring that there is compliance to those regulations. It is, it's not like we are waiting for another day. We expect that this has started already. So all, all, all parties are expected to comply with the regulations that have been issued by, by, by NEMA and also the Ministry of Health. Okay. I'll give you a chance for a rallying call to Kenyans, P.S., as we finish. What would be your message to Kenyans who are watching you right now? I would like to appeal to Kenyans on two fronts. First, uh, uh, to appreciate the efforts that the government is doing to ensure that uh, we manage the coronavirus. And to also take responsible measures to ensure that we do not uh, cause secondary um, uh, infection, infections by mishandling a uh, waste coming out of uh, the, 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 the masks or the gloves or the containers that we are using uh, at home or in our offices or, or in other places where we are. We need to make sure that we safely manage them in, in accordance with the guidelines that we have given. And I also want to take this opportunity to appeal to all Kenyans, wherever they are, because this is a rainy season Please take your time off with your family within your compound while practicing social distance. Make sure you plan a tree. And don't just plan one, plan more. Because uh, they say that if you did not plan a tree 20 years ago, then the next best time to plant a tree is now. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Harry. Dr. Chris Kipto there, the PS Minister of Environment and Forestry, speaking to us about the guidelines in terms of mask disposal here on Daybreak. We're taking a quick break. When we come back, we still have a lot lined up for you in the next 40 or so minutes. We'll have another conversation about the restaurants reopening. Good idea or bad idea? We'd like to hear from you as well. All right, see you shortly.